It was past midnight on August 31st, 1888, when Polly Nichols left a rooming house in the East End district of London known as Whitechapel. For her, walking these streets at this hour was part of doing business, as it was for many women in this bleak, impoverished part of the city. But this time, Polly's business would turn deadly. Somewhere in the darkness, she met a knife-wielding stranger with a ruthless motive. This stranger would kill repeatedly during the next 10 weeks, always suddenly, always silently. And with each victim grew a murderous legacy that spread suspicion, fear, and panic. And even now, arouses fascination. remain unsolved to the stranger's identity unknown, except by a name that's become synonymous with evil. The discovery of Polly Nichols' body at 3.40 a.m. in Box Row was in itself no cause for panic in the East End of London. Crime was an everyday fact of life here, and women were not uncommon victims. Working class women were no strangers to violence. The East End was a rough place. Working class marriages were often abusive. Yet this killing did not have the look of a domestic dispute gone wrong. What set it apart was its savagery. The murderer made two deep cuts along Polly Nichols' neck, nearly severing her head from her body. She'd also been badly mutilated, with jagged incisions leading from her groin up to her breastbone. Still, even with a corpse, an approximate time of death, and knowledge of the weapon, the police had little to work with. Their inquiries produced no motive, no eyewitnesses, and no suspects. Within days, the search for Polly Nichols' murderer reached a dead end. <laughs> But today, many are still hot on the killer's trail. From around the world they come, drawn to hear the grisly tale of murder and mayhem. And as far as this story is concerned, its own police force. It's called the Ripper Walk, one of many attractions that, along with books, articles, films and internet websites, support a multi-million dollar industry born of a killer's brutality. Violence was very much a part of these women's lives. And in the months preceding the Jack the Ripper murders, two prostitutes had already been brutally murdered. In 1888, the idea of touring Whitechapel on foot would have struck most Victorians as sheer folly. A dismal, densely populated slum. It was home to the outcasts of society who eked out a meager living not far from the hallowed halls of government. The East End was London's poor quarter, and it was also the, the area identified with poverty and social problems. Life was hard. Life had, if it had pleasures, they were very immediate, they were momentary. The presence of such squalor in the celebrated capital of the British Empire deeply troubled Victorian author Thomas Henry Huxley. I assure you I found nothing worse, nothing more degrading. Nothing so hopeless, nothing nearly so intolerably dull and miserable as life in the East End of London. You've, you've got to sort of look at the East End as sort of a maze of um, houses, tiny streets, people living seven, eight, nine in a room, overcrowded tenements that are living above cesspits. The children, 55% uh, of them are dead before the age of five. Uh, the women, they can't, get, they can't get work, so they prostitute, they, they pro they prostitute themselves. East End prostitutes earned very little. It was a very shabby kind of prostitution, perhaps in a lodging house, often 
sexual encounters in the streets. So notorious was the area, it was known as the evil Quarter Mile. Now that same Quarter Mile draws amateur sleuths and curiosity seekers who walk many of the same streets and see many of the same sights as the world's first widely known serial killer. Most of the Ripper's victims were women in their 40s who for one reason or another had abandoned lovers, husbands, boyfriends, families and taken a living on the streets. In appearance, their faces were puffy from drinking too much gin. They had cuts and bruises on their faces. They had teeth missing. You could buy an East End prostitute for three pennies, two pennies, or a loaf of stale bread. Nine days after Polly Nichols' murder on September the 8th, another brutal slaying occurred in Whitechapel. This time, the victim was a woman named Annie Chapman an occasional prostitute who worked a local market area. Behind me is the old Spitalfields Fruit and Vegetable Market, built in 1887, one year before the murders. And until it closed down some years ago, it was still one of London's main fruit and vegetable markets. So she went to the market on the 8th of September looking for a customer and was seen talking to a man is described as a sort of foreign appearance about in his 30s, wearing a, a deer stalker hat. They're seen talking outside number 29 Hanbury Street. The man is heard to ask, will you? And Annie Chapman reply, yes. 